Ready Check Radio. Stand by as we get ready to serve up all your news this week in the world of gaming. Welcome to Gaming Gumbo. Hello, Internet, and welcome once again to Gaming Gumbo on Ready Check Radio, your weekly gaming wrap-up podcast. It's Saturday at 7 p.m. Eastern. That means it's time to do the show live. Twitch.tv slash Ready Check Radio, R-A-I-D-E-O. If you're watching on YouTube or listening on Spotify, head on over to readycheckradio.com in the upper right. Click on all those socials, Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, all of that. Subscribe, turn on those notifications, tell your friends, bring them. We are... We beat the 200 follow, uh, subscribers mark on YouTube. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are inches away from crossing the 500 followers uh, mark on Twitch. That's all because of you. If you like what we do, please, that's the easiest, fastest way that you can support us, and it's free. Spread the word. We like doing it, but if nobody's going to listen, there's no point. I mean, I think we like hearing ourselves talk, but not that much. Not that much. Uh, we've got a lot to go over today. We're just going to get right down to it. So let's introduce the co-hosts that are going to talk with me about it. Mr. Jason Winter, how are you, sir? Mm. Uh-oh. I forgot to pee before the show. This could be problematic. <laughs> you, you, I mean, just go. We'll wait. No, it's fine. I'll just go here. Oh, yeah, okay. You got the old raid bottle. No problem. All right. Also on the line, wow. resident ready check artist, Yod. How are you? It's what the uh, the cup after you drink the water is for, right? All right, you guys are absolutely disgusting, and I don't want to do this show anymore. Well, I got a, I got a separate glass. I got a separate I, glass. I don't care. I don't care. I want. I just want to go home. I just <laughs> want to go home. You are home. And put a blanket. Yeah, you are home. And coming to you live from a cardboard box under the bridge. It's gaming gumbo. <laughs> chat always classy, right? Chat just keeping Stay it classy. classy. Chat. Yep. Chat Stay here. Classy, chat. I'm sure chat's going to give us a lot of opinions uh, on a lot of different yeah. topics today. Uh, we're going to we talk about the elephant in the room first. Get it out of the way here, right? I mean, we are a gaming <sighs> wrap-up show. I feel like if we didn't talk about this, it would be very awkward that we just didn't talk about it at all. However, that right. on that note, I also don't want to spend a ton of, while I'm sure we could talk for hours about this topic, uh, I don't want to do that. The last thing I think you need is three guys opining on this topic, right? Uh, I'm sure we have opinions. I'm sure we'll give some summations of those opinions. Uh, but really, w what you need to be listening to is the people that are the victims here. You don't need to be listening to us assholes talking about stuff on a podcast. Uh, you go listen to the victims, okay? okay? Having said that, I hope you understand why we will keep this a little bit shorter just because it's a little bit uh, awkward to be three guys talking about this, I think. But in the interest of making sure that we cover all news, and I think I'm echoing a little bit on your thing again, Yod, Activision Blizzard this week got hammered by the California Department of Fair Employment and Housing with a lawsuit that has been in the works for two years now. Two years Keep that in mind. We're going to come back to that. Uh, they are alleging just a lot. <laughs> I mean, it is staggering how much they are alleging here. They are alleging discriminatory practices when it comes to the way uh, women are compensated financially for working for the company. They are alleging uh, sexual harassment working conditions not just verbal harassment, but physical harassment, uh, ranging from it just inappropriate comments and jokes about topics such as R-A-P-E. Forgive me for spelling it, but YouTube absolutely hates when you say the, the word, uh, and I would rather people be able to watch this show, uh, to actual physical harassment uh, and assault, downright assault. The allegations are graphic. The allegations are detailed. Um, at the moment, the state of California calls them allegations, right? It has not been adjudicated in courts or anything. However, uh, gentlemen, I think we're just looking at the tip of the iceberg here. 
to give you some examples and uh, uh, maybe a little bit of a trigger warning for those of you that have maybe gone through something similar. Uh, female employees almost universally confirmed that working for the defendants was akin to working at a frat house, which invariably involved male employees drinking and subjecting female employees to sexual harassment with no repercussion. Cube crawls in defendants' offices were common, and male employees proudly came into work hungover. Similarly, male employees would play video games during work, engage in banter about their sexual conquests and encounters, talk openly about female bodies, and make numerous inappropriate jokes. As a product of this frat boy culture, women were subjected to numerous sexual comments and advances, groping and unwanted physical touching, and other forms of harassment. A female employee noted that random male employees would appro uh, approach her on defendant's work site and comment on her breasts. Female employees working, excuse me, for the World of Warcraft team noted that male employees and supervisors would hit on them, making derogatory comments about uh, R-A-P-E. I feel like such a child having to, like, abide by YouTube <laughs> rules for this. So yeah, asinine. But it, it's, I can say fuck as many necessary. times as I want to, though. Uh, and otherwise engage in demeaning behavior. This problem was known to supervisors and indeed encouraged by them, including a male supervisor openly encouraging a male subordinate to buy a prostitute to cure his bad mood. President J. Allen Brack specifically named as being aware and enabling this type of behavior. A former Blizzard CTO, who was unnamed, was observed by employees groping inebriated female employees at company, company events. Alex Afrasiabi, the former senior creative director of World of Warcraft at Blizzard Entertainment, was permitted to engage in blatant sexual harassment with little to no repercussions during a company event, an annual convention called BlizzCon. He would hit on female employees, telling them he wanted to marry them, attempting to kiss them, and putting his arms around them. This was in plain view of other male employees, including supervisors who had to intervene and pull him off. Female employees. He was so known to engage in harassment of females that his suite was nicknamed what I assume is a typo. They in, the, in the allegations, they say the Crosby suite after alleged rapist Bill Crosby. I assume they meant Cosby? Yeah, most I likely. I assume that's what they probably meant was Bill Cosby, uh, not Bill Crosby. Right. I am not going to continue to read the entire allegations to you, okay? These are 29 pages, and they just go on and on and on, okay? Ugh. Including bringing up the tragic suicide of a female Blizzard employee while on a mm. business trip with a male supervisor... Mm -hmm. who allegedly brought butt plugs and lube on said trip. And all the while she was under harassment from others, including having pictures of her genitalia passed about at a company party. <sighs> yeah. Blizzard's response... Oh, God. Responses. Responses, yeah. Let's yeah. go with the response that they issued the day that these allegations broke. Okay? That which was what? Thursday, gentlemen? I think Wednesday. it was Thursday. Was it Wednesday? Wednesday. 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 Okay. They had a very detailed response ready, and that doesn't surprise me. It surprised some people, but keep in mind that once a suit becomes public, the recipient of said suit has probably already had it. Okay. So it didn't surprise me that they basically had a statement ready to go. What did surprise me initially here, Jason, was that the statement wasn't three sentences. Okay. I would have expected their statement to go, we are in receipt of the suit. We dispute the accuracy of the claims. And we look forward to having our day in court. Thank you very much, Activision Blizzard. Like, that's what I would have expected. Because what are you going to do? Like... There's so many allegations in here, okay? But and no, I, this is a whole think, page. A whole at page. At this point, brevity is their friend. Yep. <laughs> yep. But no. Anyways, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, you're, you're absolutely right. Uh, the first two paragraphs, or the first paragraph just talks about how much they love diversity. 
kind of pointing the argument at the uh, inequity in pay, promotion, women being treated differently as far as the tasks they were assigned or having their male bosses go play games and uh, delegate tasks to them. Uh, uh, women of color in particular uh, alleging that, you know, to, just to request a day off, they had to write a one-page essay on what they intended to do with the damn time. Uh, nobody else had to do that. Uh, being made permanent, taking longer, promotion opportunities uh, under consideration. But, you know, hey, you're a woman. You might actually decide to have a child someday, and then you wouldn't be able to work. I mean, just the, the grossest of grossest misconduct is being alleged in this suit. The grossest. Long-standing, by the way. Two-year investigation. If the investigation started two years ago, that means this department was hearing about this stuff, Jason, well before that. Hmm. You don't just start an investigation because you want to. You start an investigation because people complained. I don't want to read you this whole statement by Blizzard because it's a piece of shit. But I will read you a couple parts. The DFEH includes distorted and in many cases false descriptions of Blizzard's past. We've been extremely cooperative with the DFEH throughout their investigation, including providing them with extensive data and ample documentation, but they refused to inform us what issues they perceived. They were required by law to adequately investigate and to have good faith discussions with us to better understand and to resolve any claims or concerns before going to litigation. But they failed to do so. Instead, they rushed to file an inaccurate complaint, as we will demonstrate in court. This sentence just absolutely boggles my mind. We are sickened by the reprehensible conduct of the DFEH to drag into the complaint the tragic suicide of an employee who's passing has no bearing whatsoever on this case and with no regard for her grieving family. While we find this behavior to be disgraceful and unprofessional, Jason, it is unfortunately an example of how they have conducted themselves throughout the course of their investigation. It is this type of irresponsible behavior from unaccountable state bureaucrats that are driving many of the state's best businesses out of California. The picture the DFEH, DFEH paints is not the Blizzard workforce of today. You, the uh, Seymour Skinner meme is, are we the problem? No, it is the DFEH that is the problem. Right. This goes on for another like three paragraphs, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, wow. The first thing that struck me immediately, gentlemen, was that comment in there. The picture the DFEH paints is not the Blizzard workplace of today. That means you are acknowledging that it is the Blizzard workplace of some other day. <laughs> maybe it yesterday, happened, maybe a couple years ago, maybe 10 years ago, of today. Because the rest of that statement does go on to all this self filating we changed our code of conduct, we did this, we do this, we value diversity, we, we, all of this stuff, all of this stuff. I'm going to give you a chance for opinions here. I'm just trying to catch everybody up, and then we'll move on. Uh, the following day, Mr. J. Allen Brack, president of Blizzard, not CEO. Remember, Mike Morheim was president and CEO. When he left in 2018, only Bobby Kotick was going to be a CEO, and J. Allen Brack was just made president. Okay, He releases a statement to his employees, emailed internally, uh, and by the way, why at this exact moment, Jason, you think anything internal would stay internal is absolutely beyond oh, yeah. me. No, it wasn't going to. There is not a shot in hell anything stays internal right now. I'm not going to read this entire thing, but basically he says, hey, you know, I'm hurt. Uh, I find these allegations extremely troubling, uh, both from current and former employees. You know, all of this stuff should be unacceptable. Uh, whether it's harassment. Stepping back, when I talked with Bobby Kotick about taking this job, one of the first things I mentioned was a revered saint of the Brack household, Gloria Steinem. Fuck you! Are you out of your damn mind? Growing up, the value of women... He didn't say that part. That was me. 
growing up the value of women as equals. I think we got that. (laughs) Understanding the work that has been done for equal treatment and the fact that there was still much to do were common themes. This is just one of the reasons why the fight for equality is incredibly important to me. I disdain bro culture. I've spent my career fighting against it, except for this video of me being on a panel, totally engaging in bro culture at BlizzCon 2010, making some woman feel very uncomfortable for asking a very, very appropriate question. Hey, could we get female character models that aren't Victoria's Secret models? Ha ha ha. What catalog would you like us to pull them from? (laughs) We're the funniest motherfuckers on the planet. Ouch. That letter pissed employees off. But to further piss employees off. There wasn't enough yet. Yeah, you just, no, you know, deal. keep digging, right? Let's, 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 let's keep but talking. The, the, there was Former... also a line in there, though, that before we move on, there was a line in there that got me where he said that he likes to personally take care of some of these problems. So he knows He's they specifically don't exist. named by name in the right. California suit as not doing that. Like, uh, there are very few names in that document. He's one of them. He's one of them. Uh, Fran uh, Townsend, Blizzard executive, sent another email that day, basically just as strong as the initial statement that Blizzard had sent in regards to the lawsuit um, where she's saying, hey, you know, I'm in a position of power here. I knew where I would be valued, treated with respect, provided opportunities. You know, this has been true during my time as a leader. I'm committed to making sure the experience I have is the same for the rest of the organization. Uh, And then goes on to, you know, bust and say, hey, these accusations, total bullshit. At the same time, predictably, predictably, Jason, while all this is happening, what's going on on Twitter, on Facebook, on social media? Dozens upon dozens upon dozens of former Blizzard employees sharing their stories. Very bravely, I might add, sharing their stories. Saying, this is all true. People high up on the food chain saying, I knew what was going to be in this court document before I read it. I saw that it was filed before I even read it. I knew what I was going to see in there. I knew what I was going to see in there. First-hand accounts of people going, I saw this happening. Yeah. And then victims coming. Yeah, or exactly. Or happened to me. And bravely giving them their stories. Blizzard had to know that was going to happen before they issued, issued that first page statement in response. Like, you, you have to be able to predict, hey, you know what? We're busted. Yeah. This is going to lead to a lot of people feeling that now is the time for them to say something and telling their stories, which means we're going to have people corroborating what this is. I think their Hence, statement should have just... Yeah. Brevity is their yep, friend. Three sentences, and <laughs> you know what? <sighs> Rich I, people don't like being pushed back against. Rich and powerful people don't like being pushed on. So yeah. they push back as hard as they can and try to hold their position. Yeah, That's they're, they're matter, attacking. Outlets, not be. outlets have decided now that they are going to stop covering Blizzard stuff. Um, yep. It, with the exception of, ironically, this suit. They're going to see the, yeah, this... Yeah, obviously. Yeah, they're going to see this stuff through. But... Sites including The Gamer, The Escapist Magazine, Prima Games. They're done. They're done. They're done. We're going to stop covering Activision and Blizzard games till there's some real change and this gaslighting bollocks ends. We'll cover the ongoing news regarding the current story, but we won't be covering the games. Prima Games. In light of recent reports regarding allegations of sexual harassment and discrimination at Activision, Blizzard, and Ubisoft, Prima Games is putting a hard pause on coverage of all Activision, Blizzard, and Ubisoft content until further notice. And many, many others are following suit. Uh, We obviously tweeted on Wednesday uh, that... Snowbound, our Tuesday show, is indefinitely suspended. Uh, I met mm-hmm. privately with Zista and Indy. We came to a collective decision uh, that we're, we're done with the show. Our Friday streams that normally I'm raiding in World of Warcraft, those are going to be suspended too. Uh, and when my sub lapses in the next whatever 30 days, uh, it's not going to be renewed. Uh, that, that's a me personal decision. The other two uh, was a collective decision for Snowbound. And we put that on Twitter. 
The last media uh, mediation arbitration session between the state and Blizzard's lawyers was on the 15th. So Blid has, oh yeah, oh yeah, they had a week over weeks. Yeah, that we we said that right at the beginning that you know they had time, they had time. Um, I do have to give a little bit of uh, I I don't want to say credit because maybe that's the wrong word here, but I did bust up on this guy. I think it was on Snowbound. It might have been on this show at some point, but probably Snowbound. It would have been more appropriate. Uh, or the relic grind, actually, given the topic. Mm-hmm. I did bust up on Adam Haliski a little bit for tweeting about Asmongold being a piece of shit uh, and then deleting that tweet uh, when Asmongold was uh, starting his Final Fantasy fourteen streams. Um, and so I had to say, I, I gave him shit about that and said, you know, it doesn't, whether you like it or not, you mildly represent your company on, on, on social media. Uh, even if you say these are my opinions, not my company's, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. This is a World of Warcraft dev calling a prominent World of Warcraft streamer a piece of shit. You don't want that. You don't right. want that. Right. Uh, I do have to go back if I'm going to bust you up when you do something wrong. I feel like it's appropriate that I come back and acknowledge when I think you did something that wasn't wrong. Uh, Adam going to tweet or Twitter talking about, uh, you know, having the blue check mark and this little bit of a platform that he thinks, you know, that he has, if he can help boost stories that matter, he's going to do that. Uh, and talking about while all these messages are going on in the background, talking about, you need to realize these are my thoughts. This has been an incredibly difficult week for many. It's been weeks of one thing or another for others. It's been a lifetime of abuse and harassment and talks about being in the rooms at Blizzard hearing these stories the last few days and just it absolutely being heartbreaking. Literally the worst day of any place I worked at. No contest. I've been yelled at, laid off, cursed out, shown the door, and lied to, and nothing, nothing compares to listening to people you respect stand up and in graphic terms say just how bad the harassment has gotten, and these are my views. I don't speak for the company, but if my company doesn't see this as the absolute lowest point it can go then I've just spent the last 13 years supporting or working at the wrong place. I fully recognize that Adam was not someone that was being harassed or abused in these ways. I am not minimizing those experiences at all. I only felt the need that if I'm going to bust up on Adam for one thing, I do have to acknowledge when I think he is at least trying to to further uh, the cause. Now, I don't know who knew what at any given time, so whose hands are dirty and whose hands are clean, I have no idea. Uh, There are many others giving their stories, and I encourage you to go read those. The last piece on this, we'll get your opinions and move on. Um, And I know I said 10 minutes, but I was talking about us 10 minutes of talking. This is some up still. Jesus, it's such a mess of a week. There's just so much of it. Yeah, Um, like you said, we can go for hours. Yeah, Mm. Morheim, Mike Morheim did take to Twitter uh, at about midnight last night put a lengthy statement out uh, saying that, you know, women, I have failed you. I have failed you. And that what he always thought his company stood for, apparently it didn't stand for. Because remember, Mike Morheim isn't all that removed from this, right? Mm, 2018. 2018. This culture didn't appear in the last two years. For those of you blaming Activision, this culture didn't just appear when Activision bought them in the, what is yeah. it, mid-2000s, 2003, yeah. 2008, something like, something that, like that. Yeah. that? No, this didn't just appear. This didn't just appear. There are horror stories all over social media. I firmly believe this is just the tip of the iceberg. I firmly believe that, and I think this is going to start moving very, very quickly. Other prominent names, I guess we should mention pre-show. We saw that uh, Josh Allen, Devolore, uh, basically called Mike Morheim's statement bullshit. Bullshit. You knew. Saying, alleging you knew. Lore taking his own flack, right, from people saying you had to have known, right? You're a bro as part of the bro culture. Again, we don't know whose hands are dirty or clean, but other people that Jason and I, you know, have known for a while... Olivia D. Grace stepping forward saying, this is one guy that I will actively say, you know, fought the right, the good fight at Blizzard. Um, Olivia left Blizzard for what she's put on Twitter as 
you know, this type of behavior. I don't believe Olivia was specific with any type of story for her. And maybe she was, and I just did not see it. She mentioned one thing, and I don't recall what it was. It wasn't like, it was just like just being ignored or yeah, something. Not yeah, like yeah. hardcore but she has expressed, but yeah. she has expressed for years the sentiment of yeah. it wasn't great there and it wasn't great at Twitch. Mm-hmm. Um, go read their stories. Go read their stories stories and for those of you from my personal point of view that want to play the innocent until proven guilty card which i respectfully agree that in most circumstances you should have the presumption of innocence you do not get it in this case this is not one person saying i had a problem with this one person and they've both got to prove their cases the minute you start having your entire company come forward and say, yes, this lawsuit is the case here. I really don't think a day in court is going to change anything for you. The other thing I thought about, too, with regards to that, was like when, when that happens a lot of time, you hear about, yeah, one person doing it. So one person gets their lawyer and yep. makes wild accusations. No, this was... A state agency conducting a two-year investigation. So it's yeah. like, right. Yeah, there's, yeah. There, there's something there. There is something. Big difference. Sure. Yeah, and that gives us a big difference when the state has to step in. Gentlemen, and I want to give you whoa, both whoa. a chance to say something if there's something on your mind. Um, I will sum up my thoughts by just saying, one, if you uh, have been hurt by any of this, I am supremely sorry that you had to go through that. You should never have. Two... This is not just Blizzard, by the way. Riot got nailed to the wall two years ago for this stuff. Ubisoft got nailed to the wall a year ago for this same stuff. Smaller companies have been getting hit for the last four or five years with these revelations. Okay? It's an industry problem. It's an industry problem. It boggles my mind how you can watch Riot and Ubisoft get hammered by this and not go, guys, we really got to fix the wagon here before something happens on this side. But I was talking to some people behind the scenes. It's not my place to give names, but they made the best point. They saw that there really were no repercussions. Mm -hmm. Riot's fine. Ubisoft is fine. Okay, we'll have some bad press for a little while. The last point I'll make is that um, if you're a Blizzard fan, and many of us are, um, this hurts, right? Not only watching people you know or are familiar with or respect, and this hurts. You always thought of this company as a little different in a lot of regards, a lot of regards, not just, you know, the whole we'll release it when it's ready rather than rush it out and stuff. And yeah, it's easy to say that Activision changed some of that, but this isn't Activision. Um, There was a aura, a a mystique around Blizzard and working at Blizzard specifically for a lot of people. Uh, And this has absolutely shattered that. I don't know where Blizzard goes from here. I mean, I don't think their games are going to close overnight or anything like that. But, Jason, I don't think it's too far to say I, I would not. I don't think Jay Allen Brack has a Blizzard future at this point. Uh, I would imagine he's going to be, if I had to guess, he's probably going to be one of the first ones to resign. Um, I believe you're going to see some other firings or resignations, too. That's another thing that drives me nuts, why they have the ability to resign in the first place. That's bullshit. Uh, yeah, because that you resignation is going to give them a... I, I think World of Warcraft will still be a thing. Overwatch, Diablo, these will still be things. But honestly, I don't know Like, if maybe it just it's Activision going forward. Like, I could very easily, easily see, hey, the way we're going to restructure is we're going to now absorb. We got rid of these bad apples, and now we absorb and we're all Activision. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe Blizzard as a brand survives this. Maybe it doesn't. But I'm kind of on the fence of you shouldn't at this point. Like, you shouldn't. All right, I'll give you each a couple of minutes. I have got everybody up to date, gave my opinions. Go ahead, Jason. You got anything you want to add? 
I wish I could believe that this will lead to some sort of real change. I'm with you. I'm, I'm as cynical as can be. Even if you do kick out Brack or, or any people who were like really obviously doing this kind of stuff and get rid of them, is that really going to change it? Does that mean that this isn't going to happen at Blizzard anymore? Yeah, and, and who knows what's going on at Activision right now. You sure, know? And, and as you say, every every other company, every company of decent size at least out there, more than like three people probably, has something like this going on to some degree. You have to believe it. And it's it's like, you know, we can talk about how, yeah, okay, maybe Lore or someone could have done more or whatever, but this is like, it's like the... Uh, like when Exxon says, what are you doing to reduce your carbon footprint? And we're like, fuck you, Exxon. You're the ones who have to do something. So it's right. What what are individuals going to do that the overall corporate structure and leadership has to do? Yeah. And probably isn't motivated to do. Because you look at that lad, the friend, what's her name there? She's a woman. She's like, I'm a woman and I haven't experienced this. So therefore, she believes it's all fine. And it's going to be said, Bobby Kotick's going to make his $40 million, So he thinks it's fine. Nothing's wrong. So until... Until that changes, until there is some incentive for people like that to change, I don't know that it's going to. So, I, And you I know what? Know. I wish I could just say, Jason, I think you're being silly. But I yeah. I can't. I watch Riot survive. I watch Ubisoft survive. Uh, with I watch Ubisoft survive with very little changes. Very little changes. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh, they changed their employee conduct. They're being sued mm-hmm. now by their union. I mean... <clears throat> Go ahead, Yad. Um, sorry. Yeah, it's. I, I agree with Jason. I, I don't think anything's really going to change. Um, it sucks. I and hope it, it is. It's a I hope problem with, you are wrong. I hope, I hope so you too. Are wrong. I honestly hope so too. Um, I, I I do believe it's a problem with corporate life because that that's you know it's it's not just a video game industry. It's it's corporate life. That's there. There's a lot of corporate businesses that work that way and they don't see a problem with that because that's how they were you know founded and all that stuff way back in the day um as far as blizzard itself goes it it is possible that they'll just completely fold into activision after this i mean the corporate structure will still be there all, all the same people will be there they'll just rename it you know just activision because one of the things they bought when they bought into when they bought blizzard was that mystique that fan base of oh blizzard's different from other companies that that that's one of the things i think that they they wanted to purchase they wanted that clout that the ability to go oh yes yes blizzard it's different it caters to the fans it's a better company than other companies but obviously now we know that's not true which yeah. as a blizzard fan it hurts because yeah, like, like we were does. talking before the show, a lot of my conversations with my now wife happened over World of Warcraft because yeah. she lived in Indiana at the time and I was down here in Atlanta and we played Warcraft together. It was back in Burning Crusade. You know, we started our characters together. We were a paladin in Death Knight eventually wandering around wastelands together, which was really weird, but that's what we were. And, you know, there were... There's a lot of memories there. But now this. Yeah. And and it really does hurt. Yep. And I'm very scared that what you're going to see is a couple key figures resign. Right. Uh, and then that's it. Mm-hmm. Like, like you said, just, with, like, just like with Ubisoft, they're doing fine. Yeah. We sent a couple people packing. Well, no, you didn't. You gave them the opportunity to no. resign. Yeah, they, they resigned. They got yeah. their severance pay. Fire them, a other name got them. shuffled elsewhere. Fire them, name them. Done. Right. That's the, it. The problem the problem beca- comes into play also when the your entire HR department is the problem. Yeah. I tweeted that a while ago. They, they, yeah. they exist. Please, oh, yeah. don't Not ever oh, think, yeah. no matter how kind your HR rep is, that they even remotely work for you at your oh, company. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, they're, okay. they're, they're they they're exist to the keep the company safe. Yeah, mm-hmm. not you, not yeah. But you. I mean, yeah, it it's mm. all right. Anyway, yeah. let's move on. Twenty minutes to catch you up. Ten minutes of our opinions. There's half the show. Let's talk about some better stuff. Obviously, if you want to uh, chime in. 
please feel free in the comments on YouTube or on Ready Check Radio. But again, I can't encourage you enough. Shut us off uh, after the show and go go listen. Go read. Mm-hmm. Them, not us. Go listen yeah. to them. Yeah, listen to their stories. Gentlemen, this made me very happy in a week of uh, Mike not being very happy. But it also makes me a little scared. A little scared. A little scared. And I'm sure you know why. (laughs) (laughs) Electronic arts, right? So let's take a look at some new titles coming. Dead Space is coming back. Dead Space is getting a remake on PC, PS5, and the Xbox Series X. We have not seen a Dead Space since Dead Space 3 in 2013. Now, keep in mind, these were made by Visceral Games. That doesn't exist anymore. No, no. Remember, EA closed them in 2017. And I love the original Dead Space. I remember having my mother and Havoc over, and that was like, I I just recently gotten a large flat screen TV at the time. And the Xbox 360, and I had Dead Space on there, and that was phenomenal. Phenomenal, spooky, scary, love the gameplay. Dead Space 2, okay, I mean, it's still here, but I don't enjoy it as much as the first one, but that's the nature of sequels, maybe, in most cases. Dead Space 3, oh my God, what have they done? What have they done to my boy? What have they oh, done? they murdered my boy. <laughs> oh, they murdered my boy. Um, and then we haven't seen anything. It is coming back. Jason, I am excited. There are people that, you know, did, you know, uh, have something to do with the original Dead Space that are working on uh, other things. So I kind of watch what they're doing, too. Like Glenn Schofield is is doing the Callisto pro- uh, protocol and stuff. But I don't know. It's somebody else working on it, and it's still EA. But it's Dead Space. Uh, EA takes all the things you love and... <laughs> And murders my boy. They, <laughs> murders they, your boy. No, yeah. no, they don't murder him. They monetize him. Yeah, yeah. De- uh, uh, Dead Space yeah. Three was just awful. Just awful. Yes. But the Frostbite engine uh, isn't that the one that everyone said was terrible for Anthem? Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't. I, think it I don't was. know. Uh, Frostbite is made for FPSs. That it was the, well, the again, hard. But they, the hard they still, part. They still the, issues with it. With they had huge issues with it because it, it's not made to do the RPG elements that uh, Anthem was trying to do. Okay, maybe. Mm. I think if I you go, right. it is used in Battlefield. So I guess it yeah. I think if you go right. back, okay. that was one of the big problems. And and Zach's in chat. He could probably quote me on this. Uh, I believe that the Anthem team had, did have huge problems with Frostbite, but they weren't shooter-related. They were more related to character customization, RPG-like elements, stats, that oh, type of thing. Apparently Madden uses it, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, th- that was a mandate. Remember? Sure. EA mandated no, that they had sure. to use the Frostbite engine. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Plus, Anthem had a lot more other problems yep. going on. Yeah, Anthem was yeah, RPG issues. I remember the horror stories talking really about having to work with it and having it being a mess. So. Yeah, it is 100% made for FPS. 100% made for FPS. Uh, so, I, you know, I, I think it'll be okay here. I think Football it'll be playing okay. simulations, is what you're saying? Yeah. FPS? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> so, I'm very excited about this. Do you guys care? Like, have you ever played Dead Space? I know, Jason, you're not huge into consoles but they did eventually make pcs right so i want to say that i played like a little bit of a demo on something at some point and I remember being pretty horribly creeped out by it and thought it was kind of cool but you're right i didn't have a console at the time so i didn't play it anymore might have done it later. I, don't I wasn't in the store i swear it was like at a private place maybe it was at a friend's house or something i don't remember but it seemed cool and yeah i love it i love it i'm very nervous yod though like the same reason yeah. you were nervous about your uh, Mass Effect remastered right. series. I'm very nervous here. <laughs> well, the, the and I was just thinking about that. They're just a Mass Effect remaster where they bump up some stats here and there and and tweak something. Yeah, this and, is a remake. You know, re-render some. This, yeah, this is a like ground up rebuild from like you know zero, isn't it? Yeah, it's a total remake. K- kind of like kind of like with the Final Fantasy VII remake. Yep. It's it's. It's brand spanking you. They could do anything to it and monetize everything. <laughs> yeah. But they didn't monetize uh, Mass Effect, did they? No, but that wasn't a ground-up rebuild. 
no, that sure. was a yeah, it was a remaster. Remaster. Yeah, sure. They they re I, I, some Here's stuff. the they thing though: with... if you're gonna bring this back in your EA, I think you have to know that what killed it was your mostly your monetization decisions in you would Dead think. Space Three. Like you have to you look at that, Jason, and go, "Wow, we almost murdered it." Maybe we should do things a little differently. But then it's also EA. So <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You guys been watching a lot of New World or checking out New World Closed Bait? I know neither of you are playing. I, I did play and streamed a little bit of it this week. But Jason, it is something you and I through MMO Bomb uh, more than anything at the beginning were kind of watching, kind of a little bit interested in, maybe more for setting than anything else because we didn't see a lot early. Uh, but we've kind of been laughing at it for a while now, uh, wondering if Amazon will ever sell anything. What are your thoughts uh, as you check it out, this last beta before it launches next month? Well, you know I watched you, and I'll, I'll explain my... Th we can explain, yeah, yeah. You can explain your thoughts on it. But, but I also watched another streamer last night, played for like half an hour, and then he was just like, I'm just done. <laughs> he just was, He's just like, I'm just doing stuff, and okay, whatever, I'm I'm done. What did you think, though? I, I, I mean, I agree with both of you. I just say it, it's, it exists. It's okay. It's all right. And and Amazon does not want just all right. No, they, well, Amazon, <laughs> I don't think can afford this. all right. No, I think Amazon, after... I think if this tanks, Amazon yeah. Games is dead. It's not that it tanks. Yeah. It's it's just that it it doesn't make people want to. You know, it's not the next WoW or Final Fantasy fourteen nowadays. Exactly, that's what they want. Yeah, if it does like Guild Wars two money, that's not going to be enough for them, you know. Yod, what do you think? I watched um, the IGN first first look at the final beta, and there was another streamer that did a uh, a about you know video um, where they played through a lot of stuff. And like like Jason said, it's it's there, it exists. Um. It looks like it could be fun. The UI needs a lot of work, though, because it is. Oh, it ain't getting so it. unattractive. <laughs> it ain't getting. It. Keep it, remember this was <laughs> yeah, supposed to come out last year. Yeah, yeah, I understand <laughs> it. Duck, I get it, but it is so basic. I mean, it has no, and I think that's one of the problems why it's it's just there yep. and it's not gonna pop because your interface is how people will see your game. Yep. And if you don't have that kick-ass interface that will drag people into it, and, the, you know, it's they're not coming back. There there are aspects of the, the game that I like. Uh, I think this beta, I'm going into it a little jaded because I've literally been in alphas and betas for years now. So I've done, like, this initial two, three hours of stuff, like, five, mm -hmm. six times now. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, I want to get to the dungeons and stuff like that that they've put in, but I also lack the motivation to do it in beta, knowing I'm going to have to do this again when right. the game comes out in August. Gotta start so, over. Yeah. So, it's uh, almost like MMO Dollar should make the game more interesting than earlier. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't hate it. Uh, it's not blowing me away yet, but I am willing to say that I haven't gotten beyond... Uh, in this beta in particular, beyond the stuff that I've already done, you know, leveling up a little bit, choosing a faction, getting some initial quests done there and doing this and this and this. Uh, I don't think it's going to be, at least for me, I don't think it's going to be anything stellar. It might be, I think at best, uh, it would be like right below Elder Scrolls for me. Like I play a lot of Final Fantasy fourteen. I played uh, a lot of World of Warcraft. I played Elder Scrolls Online. I play that in spurts. I think that it, you know it might fit in that four spot. Uh, I kind of agree you with know, Zach that maybe Amazon Games becomes a better publisher than a developer uh, <laughs> with, after Lost Ark launches, and presumably they'll probably pick up some other titles after that. Watching uh, the IGN first look, they they too said. You know, it felt like Elder Scrolls because they got to do the opening area, create a character, all that stuff. Then they dumped them into a big PvP match, and then they gave them a walkthrough of one of the uh, end game dungeons and the mechanics and stuff like that. They it was they completely agree with you. It, it feels like Elder Scrolls. So. Sticks in chat saying, "I honestly think it's coming out at a bad time with the hype of 14 and Endwalker coming on the horizon. That's in November." Ooh. I think it's going to get buried. Uh, I, 
I don't think there was. I don't think there is a good time for a media. Yeah, there really isn't. <laughs> there really isn't. No, there what, really what was isn't. Bless's excuse? What was you know Ooh. Crucible's excuse <laughs> or whatever you know? When when was the good time? Tell me when that would have been. Yeah. Uh, Jason added to the show notes here. What do you got here? You did you cancel look, your pre I told you I wrote in chat even. I did no, stuff. You could have it was a segue. <laughs> Jesus, give me a okay, second to right. finish the segue. <laughs> <laughs> you got uh, the EA Play this week, and there were a couple things you wanted to to mention to people that you kind of yeah. thought were a little interesting. All in all, the show was just meh, but pretty much, know. yeah. But what what did you see talking. that you liked? Uh, one of the things they showed off there was a new game called uh, World. What was it called? World of Random, or I might have the I might have that wrong there. It's a uh, hang on. What's it called? <laughs> hang on, do my Google's Lost in Random. That's what it's called. Lost in Random. It's set in the world of random, where apparently everyone's fate is determined by the roll of a die. And dun, dun, little, dun. Girl gets, little girl gets taken away to serve the evil queen, and her sister has to go find her. The sister and the sisters are named Even and Odd. And the sister has, you play as Even, the sister you have to go and find her. You get a little friend called Dicey, which is of course a die. Dun, dun, dun. And it's got kind of like an action combat, but also sort of like a turn-based card card and dice thing, because of course it's got random elements to it. Got a really cool look to it as a kind of Nightmare Before Christmas, Tim Burton kind of look to it, very dark and uh, exaggerated figures and so forth. So I like Mad kind of Martha kind of and neat. Chad. It's so interesting, he can't remember the name. <laughs> yeah. I, I, don't, I don't remember if it was World of Random or Lost in Random. It's yeah, okay. It's but random. It's the, not random game. Yeah, it's lost in random. Lost yeah, pretty cool. in random. If someone had the uh, the the B roll queued up for it, we could actually be seeing it right now. Yeah, it, it was the video was too long. It didn't finish downloading by the time I got back from uh, the amusement park with Steven. It was okay. an hour and eight minutes. <laughs> there were, there are like trailers you could have found separate too, but you know. Yeah, well, I wasn't gonna do that. You didn't even remember the name. Yeah, you didn't even. To be fair, you didn't even supply me with the right name. <laughs> I would have been you, like, you where the hell is this world of random trailer? <laughs> Uh, oh, you did like the Battlefield Portal, and I we had talked about that like a day or two ago in MMO Bomb because we don't know like how much of Battlefield's going to be free. Uh, we know it'll have elements, yeah. but the Portal element I I do think looks really cool. A lot of user created stuff in there, uh, yep. a lot of access to things. Well, they say first of all that uh, launches as part of one of your three core experiences located in Battlefield, so I think it's not. Free to play. I'm yeah. very sure it's not. Yeah, I I opted not to cover it because I didn't yeah. think it was going to be. But what it is, it, what it reminds me of is actually like a uh, if you ever if you ever played Overwatch and done the workshop and that you make all these different modes. You could have you know characters with you know different health pools or some characters do more damage or you switch characters around or whatever. That's kind of what it is. It's like a, it's like a sandbox where you can make your own modes. Like the example they give was, what if we had six six uh, soldiers from 2042 against like 30 soldiers from 1942. You could have <laughs> matches like that. You could have matches, like I said, with different kinds of weapons available or whatever, or different uh, areas and so forth. So a lot of weird and wacky stuff you can do just mixing all the different Battlefield games, Battlefield 1, you know, the 1942 stuff, 2042 and so forth. So Yeah, it's absolutely sandbox. Absolutely yeah. like Halo 3 sandbox, 100%. Yod, you're a creative type. I bet you could come up with some interesting, <laughs> interesting <laughs> yeah, it, modes there. It did sound kind of interesting. It, it, it reminded me of the old, uh, going back to Blizzard, apparently, um, the old StarCraft build your own, you know, PvP maps and stuff like that type of situation, but more intense, obviously. And, uh, yeah, it, it does sound like uh, rather interesting where you can pit, like, future stuff with past stuff. Like, you know, what what happens if you drop a mod, modern-day tank into World War Two? Yeah. You know, you got all the ground troops and stuff there. Or hell, World War One, where you, there were no tanks really, and it was all ground troops, and you have one tank against everyone. Mm -hmm. Can you win? Is it enough? You could find out. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Depends on the tank, maybe. I don't know. Hey, How about helicopters? Maybe. Whatever. Sure, bring in helicopters. Yeah. Helicopters versus tanks. Who wins? I don't yeah. <laughs> I know we mentioned Depends Ubisoft at the beginning, and I just wanted to poke the bear on this one a little bit. Oh, God. Uh, not talking about any of the allegational type stuff, but talking more about... Do you guys remember... Like, maybe you don't. <laughs> do you Do you remember Skull and Bones? Anybody remember Skull and Bones? 
remember hearing about it. I, yeah, I remember some vague mention of something back when Black Sail came out that they were going to have some kind of pirate DLC. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. then You're, you got it, you got it. There was nothing, this and, is... then, <laughs> and then there was some mention that somebody was making some kind of MMO-type pirate game. Yeah. So and Ubisoft Singapore, yeah. who did a lot of the ship stuff in Black Flag, was originally tasked with taking a lot of those assets and making a live service game. Uh, and now, eight years later, I mean, it's still stuck in development hell. It's <laughs> absolutely stuck in development hell. Kotaku did a whole expose on it, Singapore's challenges, the th bunches of leadership coming in and out, the game not having any clear vision or anything like that. We saw, the, I think this trailer that I'm showing was from E3 2018 or 2017, maybe. Uh, absolutely just, uh, yeah. It's an absolute nightmare, Jason. And I only bring this to the show. Only bring this to the show. Because in Kotaku's piece, I saw one sentence that really just, I mean, it spoke to me. It spoke to me. <laughs> because I don't know about you, but if you own a game company and you are building a game and five years, six years, seven, eight years, and $120 million plus right now is what they're alleging, people behind the scenes saying, uh, I kind of just go, why don't we cancel this? Why don't we cancel this? And so if you're wondering why, <laughs> it couldn't have happened to a nicer company. <laughs> It's because they can't. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's not legal. Yeah, well, here, here's the oh. thing. Here's the oh, thing. you would think. You would think. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, canceling it is the part that's not yeah, legal. It's not legal for them to cancel it. <laughs> and you might be asking, what the fuck do you mean it's not legal? Well, here's the thing. When Ubisoft got the team purchased and started building the office in Ubisoft Singapore... They got a lot of subsidies and tax cuts and things like that from the Singapore government. As conditions of said uh, proposition between the two entities, uh, they were to hire a certain amount of Singapore citizens. They were to offer a number of different things that benefited Singapore. And one of the conditions was that this team had to release its own IP game under Ubisoft to try to naturally bring attention to game development in Singapore. This wonderful new IP was brought to you by Ubisoft Singapore. So as a condition of all the subsidies and arrangements, it's illegal for them to cancel it. It's spent on 120 million more or more on this game right now. It's stuck in development hell, and they're not allowed to cancel it. It couldn't happen to a better company, Yacht. It couldn't happen I mean, to a better company. I mean... Technically, they could release other new IPs, but they but then they'd have to start so development money. on those. Right, <laughs> right. They've already sunk so much into this, and I mean, even back in the old Nintendo, original Nintendo and original Sega Master System and stuff like that, this long period of time that they've taken to develop is an excessive amount of time. Because I mean, you know, today tech moves a lot faster and two, three years is a long time for development and tech's going to move, move past what you're doing and you want something newer to develop on. But back then, tech moved a little slower. But even then, five, six years. My freaking God. <laughs> and the amount, of, the amount of leads they've gone through, like department leads and creative leads and the person in charge has changed so many times. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Because, of course, of course, the new guy coming in can't just pick up the papers from the old guy and go, okay, here's where we're at. Here's where we need to be. Let's go. No, he has to go, oh, screw this. This is my my thoughts. These are the new vision of what this game's going to be every single yep. time. Three sources oh told God. Kotaku that a deal with the Singapore government requires that this launch in addition to hiring a certain number of people at its Singapore studio in exchange for generous subsidies, they said Ubisoft Singapore must also launch original brand new IPs in the next few years. <laughs> they missed the so, they, they missed a lot of dates so far. If you don't know, this has been delayed like half a dozen times, I think. Yeah. Right. So what happens if they miss if they miss the next few years, Mark, that you know they're required to release by? 
I, I don't know. Maybe you got to pay the subsidies back. That's not unheard of in in certain things. I mean, Rhode Island <laughs> got, was, hurt. was yeah. put on the hook. I was thinking of that yeah. whole thing, yeah. <laughs> Rhode Island got put on yeah. the hook for uh, 38 Studios, that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyway, that's a cluster. Jason, on the oh, other yeah. side of the cluster spectrum, uh, Sony's got a weird little patent. <laughs> I don't know how you yeah. would use this, but they've got a weird mm. little patent brewing. Yep. The patent is called Spectators Vote to Bench Players in a Video Game. <laughs> and apparently it is a thing that will allow viewers to be able to vote to kick out players for bad behavior, poor sportsmanship, and substandard performance. It is a method for displaying a video game to spectators. It includes receiving votes of spectators to remove a player from a video game. And the various other things basically repeats that sort of thing over and over. But yeah, that's basically what it is to allow you to allow people to vote to remove a player. Now, mm-hmm. I don't think this is as nefarious as it sounds to a lot of people. Really? I feel like this is more like, or I think it's more like along the lines where if you have some sort of, if you're watching a streamer and it's like, okay, you know, they're going to play a, a hero shoot or whatever, you vote to pick which player you're going to play, ne- character you're going to play next. Okay, I have to play this character. I'm no good at haha. Everyone's going gonna, gonna to laugh out of it. This to me is like if everyone's playing some sort of multiplayer, they're playing Fall Guys, or not Fall Guys, but a, a local kind of game, like Among Us or whatever. Hey, let's vote to kick out Joe or whatever. Okay, ha ah, funny, Joe has set on the next game, screw him. That's how it feels to me, a little more like that. As opposed to... Right, but I mean, if, this if could absolutely are... be abused. Absolutely. Sure, well, yeah. Oh, yeah, Flynn, yeah, Flynn by the way, asking about Skull and Bones reaching Alpha. In the Kotaku piece, Ubisoft claims... That it, it has completed alpha, I, but that's Claims. Ubisoft claiming it. Yeah. So. Anything can be considered to be an alpha. Right. So, <laughs> so yeah. Jason, I'm going to vote you out of every game you stream. You play well, a Final see, Fantasy VII Remake? Gone. You're not allowed well, to play. See, what you're doing is you don't <laughs> enable it on your stream, duh, dumbass. <laughs> I'm going to sneak there. to your house and enable it. <laughs> <laughs> Be like, why am I not allowed to play Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two? Mike, and why is Mike me? sitting on the couch? <laughs> <laughs> How the hell did you get here? Uh, did I? Are either of you Olympics guys? I love the Olympics. I loved the Olympics back in the day. Oh, I love them! I love them! Love them! Love them! Love them! They're uh, kind of shitty too now. But Jeez. this year's rough. Yeah, it's it's rough to watch too. Uh, without the audiences there, it definitely know. loses something. <laughs> Uh, so you guys didn't watch the opening ceremony? Uh, I, I, I watched a little bit of the snippet of the thing we can't show because yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, the snippet. There was I, I so much that. video game music in the opening ceremonies. Mm-hmm. So much, a there... lot of Final Fantasy stuff too. No Nintendo shit though, none. No, <laughs> no Nintendo music. Nintendo was like, we don't care if we're from Japan and they're in Tokyo, pay us. And Japan was probably like, no, <laughs> no. But yeah, there was a ton of Final Fantasy music too. I, they, even Frog's theme from assigned, Chrono Trigger uh, was in there. Yeah, they, but they, they've also assigned a lot of anime characters as yep. for each a mascot for each event. So I mean, it's Japan. They're they're going all out if they can. Tremendous. I suggest you check it out if you didn't get a chance to. If you're a fan of video games, 100. percent Gentlemen, let's slide over do games of the week and head on out of here. Just so all of you at home know, there is a topic that has been cut from two consecutive, not consecutive, but two shows. <laughs> this one's my fault. Uh, over the last uh, I have couple props of weeks. Ready. <laughs> we have props ready. We really want to do it. And we had it in here because we thought we were going to get it, but it actually took me longer to synopsize Blizzard than I thought it was going to take uh, to get you the full picture, including Morheim. But. One of these days, we're going to talk about a three-week-old article now at this point. <laughs> a three- or four-week-old article. Pretty that, much evergreen content. So it's not yeah, yeah. It, that ranked all the Zelda games, and we're going to go through it. Uh, it's been bumped from, like, two or three shows now. One of these days, we will get to it. We will One get to it. One of these days. Yeah. Anyway, Games of the Week is the segment we wrap up the show with where each of one each of us gives you a recommendation for a game, and we've been loose about games. I think we've put board games in there before, too, and some mobile stuff, too, so just a game. Uh, but where we give you a recommendation on a game, could be something we're playing now, could be something we played 20 years ago, and we think you should check out, and it's your job in the comments to tell us what you think. Who gave the best Game of the Week recommendation? Yeah, this week we're going to start with you, sir. 
Yeah, all right. So the other day I was watching one of uh, the other streams. Uh, I think it was uh, you talking to Zista about which game system you grew up with. Uh, um. Or was that Relic Grind? I, I, I've oh, yeah, that was the Relic bit. Grind when we were talking about okay. the console wars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching them one after another. So, <laughs> But so brings me to my old days playing Genesis, and I am going to say Golden Axe. Ooh. All yeah. Right. All right. Jason? There was a little arcade uh, underneath in, like, Student Center of my, when I went to college. I remember them having a Golden Axe machine there. Mm-hmm. Golden Axe so, is a blast, man. Put a few quarters into that. Just a few. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with uh, Subnautica, which ah, I right. I have the sequel. I'm going to get to it at some point once I get done with some of the other stuff I'm playing. But I, I definitely recommend Subnautica. It was a lot of fun. A very uh, very freeform open world exploration kind of thing with a neat. It, it's weird that it was a it was a a freeform exploration world with lots of crafting, but it also had a good story, which is just rare for me that I can find something that has both of those sort of things. So. It, that's going to be a challenge. I don't think I'm going to yeah. win this week. Subnautica <laughs> yeah. is a good game. Subnautica is a good game. I'm going to recommend uh, Getsu Fumiden, uh, Undying Moon. Uh, it's one I talked about a f- maybe like a month or so or, or whatever ago when it was just getting ready to release. And a very Metroidvania from Konami. Beautiful art. Beautiful art. I have had a chance to play it a few times. I'm very much enjoying it. So if you like Metroidvanias or what is it? Search action, I guess, is the the, the, the genre we're supposed to say now instead of Metroidvania. So the people <laughs> who don't know what Metroid or Castlevania is know what we're talking about. It's a Metroidvania. Uh, gets you Fumiden. Tremendous art style, tremendous game. Go ahead and check it out. Chat, don't go anywhere after the show. We'll go dead for about 15 seconds or so while we relabel everything. But, of course, we'll be coming back live with Torchwick and his episode this week of Games Older Than Me. What are you playing today, Torchwick? We're going to keep playing Vagrant Story until we're Uh, done with it, I hope. How are you enjoying it? Like I remember talking to you after week one, and you were like, I'm kind of getting into it, but it starts really slow. And then last week you were like, okay, I'm really enjoying this, and I didn't know this about this, and I thought that was neat. Like, so are are we very much enjoying it now? I'm I'm having a lot of fun, and I'm getting very confused at the same time. So that's that's vagrant know. story. Yeah. <laughs> that's vagrant story. All right, stay tuned. Torchwick will turn it over to you in just a few minutes. Chat. Of course, we'll be live here on Thursdays with uh, The Relic Grind at 7 p.m. and Gaming Gumbo on Saturdays at 7 p.m. And then, of course, follow the schedule down below for all of the streamers here. I normally stream Monday, Wednesday, Friday. In light of the snowbound changes and the Friday stream changes, it might switch to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday just to fill that gap for a little bit. We'll figure it out. Or maybe you'll just see some people guesting here and there instead of the people that stream in their normal time slots every week. We'll pick up a couple of the other ones and let them go for a night or two type deal. But stay tuned. You can follow it down below. Make sure you subscribe, follow, do all that stuff. Help support the channel with a freebie way if you want to. Until next time, Yod, where can everybody find you? Well, originally, we were going to go with... uh, I was going to join Faye again with Tarkov on Thursdays for Diablo 3. But because of in light of everything, we are canceling that. And we're going to be doing Destiny 2 this Thursday after Relic Grind. But other than that, Yacht Artworks on Facebook, Yacht Artworks on Twitter, and right here on Gaming Gumbo. Jason. On Twitter at Winter Informal, streaming at twitch.tv slash Jason Winter. I'm Mike Byrne. You can follow me personally right there at Magic Man 1. But more importantly, follow at RC Radio, and we'll tweet at you every time we go live with a podcast or a stream. Until next time, gang, stay safe. And we'll see you on the servers. Oh, yeah.